Well, we've had a good time, but I have one more message for you today. And it's titled, Just One Look. And the text is taken from Isaiah 45, verse 22. It says, Look unto me, and be saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity that we've had to preach the gospel, and not only is it an opportunity, it is a great responsibility. And Lord, we just pray that you will continue to be with the church, and we pray that we these people have been blessed this week, uh, this part of this last week, and that in some small way, Lord, that they've been blessed to hear the gospel and to sing and fellowship together. And we just thank you that you do revive us, Lord, in these meetings. You just lift us up, and we praise your name. And Lord, we thank you for the Word of God, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And Lord, we pray today as we proclaim the message that if there's one person today that's never obeyed the gospel, that they'll walk down this aisle, they'll give their life to Jesus Christ, and they'll repent and be baptized and leave here a brand new creature today in Jesus. In His name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Look unto me and be saved all the ends of the earth. You know, you think about the eyes. The eyes are the main gate we have leading to our minds and our imaginations. And by the way, brother, I appreciate that Sunday school lesson about Ananias and Sapphira. And, and uh, I just wanted to say that before I begin. But the eyes are the main gate we have leading to our minds and our imaginations and our hearts. Just one look can be a powerful and life-changing thing. The psalmist said in Psalms 119.37, Turn away mine eyes from seeing the vanity. And eyes can lead to dangerous things. Jesus said in Matthew 5.29, If your right eye offend you, he said, pluck it out. Now, we've heard this that people have experienced love at first sight. Now, I don't know how many of y'all fell in love with your wife at first sight. And uh, my wife, you know, that I got now, I went to the hospital and she chased me until she got me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I got lucky, man. I got lucky. I, I got a beautiful wife and uh, God just blessed me so much. But, I don't know if it was love at first sight. I thought she was pretty good looking. And uh, I saw her as a nurse in the hospital. And she knew me. I didn't know her at that time. But we went to church together. My dad baptized her and her first husband. And her first husband, of course, died of, uh, of heart disease. But anyway, I, you know, a lot of people say, well, it was love at first sight. Just that one look. <clears throat> You know, a little girl asked her mother, how did the human race start? And the mother answered, God made Adam and Eve and, and they had children and so all mankind was made. Two days later, the little girl asked her father the same question. The father, she said, Father, how, how did the human race start? And the father says, well, honey, many years ago there were Tadpoles, and these tadpoles became monkeys, and from which the human race evolved. So the little girl was really confused, and she went back to her mom, and she said, Mom, Mom, how is it possible that you told me that the human race was created by God, and Dad said they developed from monkeys? Well, the mother answered, Well, it's very simple, honey. I told you about my side of the family, and your father told you about his side of the family. Maybe mommy should have taken a second look about before she married that man. But just one look can have a life-changing uh, situation. I want you to consider the power of just one look as we take a, a quick look through the Word of God and see what one look has done throughout the Scriptures 
that we read about today. Just one look brought condemnation. Just one look brought condemnation to the world. Remember Eve in the garden in Genesis 3, 1 through 6? It says in Genesis verse 3, verse 6, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food that was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of that fruit thereof, and she did eat, and she gave it also unto her husband, and he did eat. She looked at that tree which God said not to eat of, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He said you can have all the other trees, but not the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But she looked at that tree and she lost her place in the garden because after she looked, she took of a forbidden fruit that she was not supposed to have. But that one look, and so here, after she takes that forbidden fruit, Adam, he comes along and he saw what had happened and he looked at her and he looked at the tree and he said, oh well, give me a bite. And he sinned with his eyes wide open and he did eat. And just one look is all it took. As a result of that one look, as a result of that one look, sin entered into the world. And sin, because of that one look of that forbidden fruit, sin was cast upon the world forevermore, upon all mankind forevermore. And because of that one look, you have to die, and I have to die, and we all have to die because of that one look. Because of that one look, the woman has to suffer in childbearing, and the man has to work by the sweat of his brow. Just think what happened because of that one look. You know, somebody told me about Adam and Eve and thinking about Adam and Eve. Somebody suggested that they had an ideal marriage. He didn't have to hear about all the men she could have married. And she didn't have to hear about the way his mother cooked. <laughs> so they had an ideal marriage. But anyway, because of that one look, sin entered into the world. And then another situation was Lot's wife. We turn over in Genesis 19, 26, but his wife looked from behind. She looked back from behind him, and the Bible says she became a pillow of salt. Now God warned them not to look back in verse 17. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for your life. Now they're leaving Sodom and Gomorrah. God's destroyed it. It's raining fire and brimstone. God's destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And God says, Don't you look back. Escape for your life. Look not behind thee. Neither thou stay in all the plain. Escape to the mountain. He said, Lest thou be consumed. But what happened? She looked back. And she became a salt lick in the desert. And just one look was all it took. She became a pillow of salt. Now, I, I was in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky for 14 years, and all around me was farmers. And every time I'd go out on the farm, I'd see those big blocks of salt. And I'd think of Lawrence's wife. She turned into a pillow of salt. And she wouldn't have been in the wicked sea of Sodom except for the look that her husband gave in that direction when he selfishly chose the best land when given the choice. In Genesis chapter 13, you remember Abraham said to Lot, Lot, you choose which land you want. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. He says, if you go to the left, I'll go to the right. And so, old Lot, he lifted up his eyes and he beheld the plain of Jordan that was well watered in Genesis 13, 10, and he chose to go that direction. It just took one look for, Ch uh, for Lot to choose the plain of Jordan, which was towards Sodom and Gomorrah. And that one look led to the sins of perversion and homosexuality. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed by fire and brimstone. Lot had to leave the cities. Lot wives turned into uh, Lot's wife turned into a pillow of salt. And think about the other sins that happened because Lot looked toward the plain of Jordan. Think about it. 
He had a, his daughters got him drunk, had an incestual relationship with him. And from those two daughters came the worst tribes in history. Moab and Ammon were born. And the Moabites and Ammonites were two nomadic tribes who were the arch enemies of the people of Israel. <coughs> Just because of that one look that Lot took towards Sodom and because his wife looked and turned into a bill of salt. And then there's another situation in the Bible about one look. Achan. In Joshua 7, 20 through 21, and Achan, he answered Joshua and said, Indeed I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw, he said, among the spoils, a goodly Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight. Then I covered them and took them, and behold, they're hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, and the silver is under it. God's people, if you remember, were instructed not to take the spoils of the battle. But Achan did in this progression. He saw the spoils. He saw this Babylonian, Babylonian garment. He saw the silver. He saw the goat. He saw this stuff. And he coveted it. And he took it. Taking was a disobedient action. But it all began when he took one look at that garment and at that silver and at that gold. And then that one look is all it took. And listen what happened to Achan. Because of one look, that one look cost Achan his lives, the lives of his sons, the lives of his daughters, his cattle, his sheep, his oxen, his asses. According to Joshua 7, 21, and all Israel stoned him with stones and burned him with fire. And after they stoned him to death, they buried him, his children, his livestock, in a heap of stones. One look in disobedience to God cost him and cost him the life of his family. One look in disobedience to God is costly. And then David and Bathsheba. All of us remember David and Bathsheba. In 2 Samuel eleven two, it said it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked up on the roof in the king's house, and from that roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. He saw Bathsheba. He lusted after her. The Bible says the lust of the eyes can certainly cause us to sin. He saw, he lusted, he sinned. The lust of his eyes demanded, hey, there is a beautiful woman She's taken a bath, and i got to have that woman. And he lusted, and he started down a slippery slope. Do you like water slides? You ever go on a water slide? Uh, let me tell you a story. Several years ago, I was preaching in Lawrenceburg, and, and, and I took a bunch of kids to this big water park. Now, water slides of all kinds was there big little wave pools or you could just go down that little lazy river. And I let these kids talk me into going down this big tube slide. I should have known something that was up because there wasn't too many folks in line. Anyway, once you start down that slide, there's no turning back. When I got through... I felt like I was flushed down a commode. <laughs> David could have seen Bathsheba taking a bath and he could turn away, but he chose to go down that slide and once he started down that slide, there was no turning back. Just one look is all it took for David to cause Bathsheba to sin, her husband to be killed in the forefront of the battle. And we know David suffered from just one look at Bathsheba and their sin. Nathan told him, God spare your life, David. But in 2 Samuel 12, 14, because by thy deed, 
or this deed that has given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to bless him. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. Actually, David and his family, if you read about David and his family, he suffered most of his life through his family because of that sin and that one look with Bathsheba. In James 1.15 it says, When lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death. Lust, sin, death. Put those three words together. That's the most form, most dangerous form of LSD. Lust, sin, and death. And that's how it happened for David. And the baby died as a result, among others. Think about David's life. In 2 Samuel 13, his son Amon raped his sister Tamar, which caused Absalom to hate his brother Amon. And he hated him enough to have him killed. In 2 Samuel chapter 15, it says, Absalom, he forms a conspiracy against his father as king to take over his kingdom. <clears throat> and then Absalom, of course, you remember, he died in the battle. He got his hair caught in the tree and they stabbed him to death. So because the one look David took with Bathsheba, it cost him most of his life. And if you read the book of Psalms, uh, all the book of Psalms, or most of the book of Psalms, is David saying, God forgive me. And yet the Bible says David was a man after God's own heart. But David, if you read the Psalms, he was constantly saying, God forgive me. Have mercy on me, O God. Because he realized he had seen it. Men are very visual creatures. And Jesus said we can commit adultery just, just one look. So we must be set serious safeguards, gentlemen. In Job 31, one says, I made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? <coughs> Men, we all need to make some covenants. We need to say the television, be careful about the television, the computer, the magazines, the co-workers, the neighbors, complete strangers. Sometimes men can look and cause condemnation in their life and cause trouble in their life which can lead to family problems. Just one look can make you want. Just one look can bring condemnation. We used to sing a little song that says, Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. A good way to keep from going down that wrong path and looking in the wrong direction is not to even look in that general direction in the first place. Remember Jesus said, if your right eye offend you, pluck it out and cast it from thee. He said, for it's profitable that thy one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Matthew 5, 29. Just one look can bring condemnation. But I got good news. That's the bad news of just one look. But also just one look can bring justification. Now, we talked about this the other night. The children of Israel were in the wilderness, were being judged for their sin. They were griping, they were murmuring, and they had lack of faith. And God sent these fiery serpents to bite and kill them in judgment. In Numbers 21, 8 says, And the Lord said to Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten when he look upon, upon it shall live. The serpent was a picture, of course, of Christ made sin for us. In John 3, 14, And as Moses has said, Lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And all who look to Jesus can live. All who look to Jesus can live. It doesn't say look on the pole. It didn't say look to Moses. It didn't say look back to the miracle of the Red Sea. They mustn't look at the wrong thing. Only looking to the serpent in the days of Moses would spare their lives. And only looking to Jesus today in this world of sin is the only thing that can spare our lives. You know, many are looking to a church. Many are looking to what people think. 
Many are looking to what mommy or daddy says. Many are looking to the Pope. Many are looking to some saint. Or they're looking to, to marry the mother. And many are looking at their own thoughts. Many are thinking and looking at their own morality. And their own mortality. And many are looking to their own sincerity. But they're looking the wrong direction unless they look to Jesus. We sang a song, O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus. The Lamb of God, He is the one we need to look to. In Hebrews 12, 2, it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him, endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the Father in heaven. And you know why He's there? To make intercession for you and for me. That's why I pray in the name of Jesus. When I end my prayer, when we end our prayers, we say in the name of Jesus, because we have Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. Going to bat for you and me, being our lawyer. Just one look can bring glorification. Just one look can bring sanctification. In Matthew 7, 8, And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save, no man save Jesus only. Now Peter, James, and John were in the inner circle among Jesus. I know you know that. Jesus took them to pray. Jesus took them among His inner circle. And they were His disciples. And they were taken aside to a high mountain. If you remember where they saw the transfiguration of Christ. Now we know that Peter, James, and John, after they went to the mountain of transfiguration, they were never the same after this. They took their eyes off everything. They took their eyes off everybody except Jesus. And the Bible says, oh Peter, he, he wanted to build a one for, uh, you know, he wanted to build a tabernacle for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for Christ. But, God said, this is my beloved son. Look at him. Moses and Elijah appeared that day, I guess. It didn't say they saw Moses or the law. It didn't say they saw Elijah or the prophets. It doesn't say they saw each other and they were distracted. And the good advice, keep your eyes off people and on the Lord. That's what we need to do. And that's what... Peter, James, and John finally decided to do to keep their eyes off of most Elijah or the law of the prophets and begin to look at the Lord. Who are we following anyway? They saw their goal. They saw the goal that they were after. They saw their challenge. They saw the truth. They saw the light. They saw Jesus. And just one look was all it took to find real sanctification in their life. Just one look at Jesus can bring salvation. Just one look at Jesus can help us move from sinfulness to holiness, from unrighteousness to righteousness. And when we take our eyes off the temporary trappings of this life and keep our eyes on Jesus, we will find sanctification. What does sanctification mean? That means we're sanctified. That means just as if we never sinned. He cleanses us. He sanctifies us when we look to Jesus and obey Him. You know when old Peter walked on the water, and everybody says, well, Peter, you know, look what kind of guy Peter was, but you know, he was the only one who had courage to get out of the boat with him. The rest of them, the other eleven, they didn't have courage to get out of the boat. But Peter, when he walked on the water, and he he saw Jesus and he started, he stepped upon the, out of the water on out of the boat onto the ocean or to the Sea of Galilee. He began to sink. Why? He took his eyes off Jesus. He took his eyes off Jesus. He saw the winds and he saw the waves and the boisterous sea around him. But then he looked to Jesus. And then he was alright. What's the first thing you look at? each morning. 
mouthwash, coffee pot, newspaper, restroom. Well, there's some things that have to come first. But first of all, try looking to the Lord. Somebody said before you ever get on your feet, you fall on your knees. Good, good advice, right? Before you ever get on your feet, everyone and fall on your knees. And look to the Lord first. Psalms 5, 3. My voice shall hear thee in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. This is a way to sanctification daily. It's just to look away. Then enter your day and look at it differently. Philippians 2, 4 says, Look not every man on his own things, but every man on the things of others. Matthew 9, 36 says, But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. In John 4, 35, he says, Lift up your heels unto the fields, for they are white unto harvest. My whole point here is Jesus taught us to look to others. You'll never see other humans the same way again when you look at them through the sanctified eyes of Jesus and through your sanctification, through your cleansing, through being obedient. You'll never look at humans the same way. You'll see them that they are lost without Jesus. And they need sanctification through Christ. And then, just one look will bring glorification. In 1 John 3, 2, the Bible says, Behold, now we the sons of God. And it doth not appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him. For we shall see him as he is. Think about that. You and I someday are going to see Jesus just as he is. Won't it be wonderful to see Jesus? And be like him, the Bible says. We'll be like him. And the reason because you know that no sin can enter into the glories of heaven. Therefore, we must be perfect before we enter glory. We must be like Jesus. Think of these last days we're living in. Are we living the last days? Yes, we are. We've been living the last days for a long time. Are you ready to be glorified in heaven? Luke 21, 28 says, And when these things begin to come and pass, then look up. Lift up your heads for redemption. Draw it now. Titus 2, 13, Looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing to the great God in our Savior, Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 4, 18, While we look not to things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but He says the things that are not seen are eternal. The Bible says, Let yourselves treasures in heaven, not upon this earth. You know, what we have here is just temporal stuff. What we have here is just lasting for a little while. But you and I, as children of God, are looking for the eternal. We're looking for that gates of glory. We're looking to walk down that street of gold. We're looking to see that river that runs clear as a crystal through the beautiful city of heaven. We're looking... For a place where there will be no pain, no sorrow, no more suffering. We're looking for a place where there will be no more funerals or no more hearse or no, no more graves dug. All things shall be made new in that eternal home. Don't you want that, friend? Friend, today is the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. You know, you can change your whole life today with one look. To Jesus. Look to the one Lord. Look to the one faith. Look to the one baptism. And look to the one and only God. And come and accept Jesus as your Savior and Lord. And look to Him. And He will save you from your sins and give you a new life. Will you do this? We stand and sing our invitation. To